Hey guys, what's up? So, I don't have too much time, because I have to get ready for work soon, but um, I just thought I'd show you what I received. This is a package that uh, I just received from uh, a site called BrassTrains.com, you can believe that. I had a YouTube friend who request requested me this site because uh, I told him I was looking for a Reading T1, and uh, he told me not to buy the Broadway Limited products, but because they're horrible, but um, what is in here is actually Broadway Limited. I actually forgot it was, except it was before they were Broadway Limited. You will see what I mean in a minute. Right, let's get this thing open. I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife because I'm kinda in a hurry. I don't wanna uh, get out my pocket knife just yet. So let's see. Is it a good idea, is it a good idea using an X-Acto knife to cut open boxes? Or do I have to use something more reliable than a yeah I think it's a bad idea to use an exacto knife <laughs> but uh, it's almost there I'm gonna put this back on yeah, hopefully that's secure to tighten up the blade there we go my address. Good. This box is covering it up. I will look at that in a minute. Oh my god. <laughs> okay then. They definitely went overboard on the packaging. <laughs> if you can tell already. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Give me one second. This has to be like probably a... Uh, the most overkill packing job I have ever seen in my life. Alright, it is in here. Get the exact over there. There it is, Precision Craft Models. This would be the Reading T1. Ooh, nice. All right, let me get the camera adjusted and we will unbox this thing. So yeah, that was probably the most um, intense packing job I have ever seen. But hey, if it's overkill, the more it'll be protected, right? So <clears throat> let's get the lid off and see what we have in here. Oh, we already know, obviously. But all right, you can just see the wheels there. Here's the manual, stuff like that. I'm not sure what this is. I don't know if that's for something else or what. But it looks like it might be upside down. Is it in shot? Yeah, it is. Okay. All right. It's wrapped in plastic, which I kind of like ish. I don't know why. Here's some accessories, you got the wheels, you got the crank pin, you got spare traction tires. That sort of goodies. Now let's get the locomotive out. Now where do I grab this from? Get that part out. Ooh. So yeah, this was Broadway Limited before they were Broadway Limited. I'm not sure why they changed their name. I don't know their history, but oh well, it doesn't really matter. What matters is this. Sorry if you can't see it very well. And there it is, the Reading T1. This thing looks absolutely awesome. Even if it is um, uh, pre-Broadway Limited, if I know to use that words, but yeah, this thing just looks awesome. I went for this because, uh, <clears throat> well, 
The Paragon 4 series of the Reading Team 1 I heard is not so great. And uh, I kind of wanted to stay away from that one after I've been finding out what's wrong with it. Like, people would put smoke in their models and uh, you can even see the, uh, the, smoke, the smoke unit illuminating the smoke and it melted part of the boiler. Which, uh, which I kind of don't want and I want to see my engine smoke. You know, that's such a cool thing to see. And that's what trains do in real life. They smoke. And what do you want the models to do? Smoke, obviously. Uh, I don't think this one has a smoke unit. Uh, if it doesn't, I don't mind. It's uh, <laughs> This is a stunning model. I really love this. Alright, now let's get the tender out. So yeah, I was really hunting for a uh, Redding T1 and uh, my friend Southern Modeler I can remember his name, have suggested that I buy uh, something else other than Broadway Limited. So, dude, if you're watching, thank you. <laughs> I'm already loving this. <laughs> so, yeah. Here is the tender. I don't know why I thought the shell was loose, because I <laughs> heard a small, small, small loose, but it is screwed in. See, I can, I can hold the shell and then... Yeah, <laughs> I shouldn't be doing that. And there is the tender. I love how uh, the tender is all die-cast. Probably should have said a locomotive's die-cast too, but... Oh well. I'm not sure if this may have sound, because I did hear that this is a DCC ready. That's what the description said, it's DCC ready. So, uh, if it's DC, great. Because I probably won't be putting a decoder in this at some point. Maybe I will, but at this point in time, I don't want to kind of want to leave it analog for now so yeah all right so not really much to say about the tender it's obviously basic but not too basic in a way it is still pretty well detailed but yeah uh, let's put this on track and i will get the engine and tender connected off camera so that way you won't see me fiddle with it all right let's do this well, there is the T1 from the distance, and I have to say, this thing looks awesome. I think the coolest thing about it is, if this thing takes, excuse me, if this thing takes 22 inch radius curves, is the tender four plate. You can't see it right now, but um, the tender four plate literally reaches the tender, and I have it on, and I have the pin on the um, second hole that is like at the end of the drawbar. If that makes any sense, I'll hopefully I'll remember to show you guys. But yeah, this thing is awesome. Um, for those of you who don't know, I've only told a couple people about this. I did have a Reading T1 in the past. I think that was back in 2020, I think, uh, when the world was still shut down-ish. I think it was just after it shut down. I bought a Reading T1 in the Paragon 2 series, and I did try to run it on DC, but little did I know it was a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> So whatever you do, unless your model, unless your Broadway Limited models are like from um, maybe Paragon 2 upwards, uh, don't run them on DC. No, that's a bad idea. Unless you have a one of those special controllers that you can use to have these things make sound. But yeah, the uh, motor, the motor eventually went. I didn't have it for like a full day, and I sent it back to the seller. So even if it was my fault, I still feel guilty about that. But I stayed away from getting a Reading Z1 for a while. So, yeah, anyways, let's see if this thing will burst into life. Uh, the the um, description said it is DCC ready, so hopefully it should run on DC. Okay, then, this got sound. <laughs> Did not expect that. All right. God, this thing is loud. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, this thing is really loud. I don't know how well you can hear me over that. But it's performing really nicely. Which is a really good thing. Now 
Now you won't be able to hear the bells and whistles in this thing because I guess this is actually DC for right now. I might have to chip it in order for you to actually hear the proper sounds, but for now this is going to be analog. The pitch light is longer than the blue line models, which to be fair it sort of is, except this is before they were Broadway limited, but hey, you know, I will take it. I cannot get over how loud this thing is. But at least it's performing decently. Right, it has been a second for you, but it has been a full 12 hours from me. <laughs> Basically, I uh, <clears throat> I had a four-hour shift at work, which is not bad, you know, pretty good shift. Um, and after I got home, my folks and I went out to eat, and then we went to somewhere else. And I have been home for a little while now, and I have been playing with this thing a little bit, and... Uh, I actually did open it up right as I got home, and turns out, would you believe this? It is This thing is actually DCC fitted, if you can believe that. So, you can pretty much say that the sound on this thing will burst into life once your DCC controller gets hooked up. So now, let's turn on my Digitrax controller, and you will hear the sounds. I think the whistle on this sounds inaccurate. I don't know how the real whistle sounds on the prototype, I'm pretty sure I heard it before, but... I highly doubt it's somewhat accurate, but you guys will be the judge. And yeah, this thing is still loud. <laughs> but anyways, here's the bell. It's pretty cool how that bell's got a bit of momentum. Here is the whistle. I don't know why the whistle is sometimes unresponsive, but oh well. Here's three. I think this is the coupling clank. Put a play. Yep. There's a coupling clank. Four. Here's another whistle. Now I'm sure someone will tell me what that whistle is for. Here's five. No, I don't know. Okay, I think that's some sort of release. Or right, here's six. I'm hoping that's steam release. Here's seven. Oh, I didn't press anything to make that sound. Oh, that was seven, wasn't it? I think that's seven. I have no idea what that was. Was that the brakes? It's kind of weird. And eight, this, uh, well, obviously eight is mute, but the way this thing mutes is the coolest thing ever. Listen to this. Here's the mute button. If I press it right. Come on, it's got to do it. No. Okay. There it goes. That's the mute button. And for some reason, I have to press down on these buttons. I don't know why, but the way this thing mutes, it sounds so cool. I love that feature. All right. And when you hit mute again, it starts back up. It sounds a little cool. Nine, I'm sure, I think nine doesn't really do anything. Yeah, I tried 9 before and it uh, doesn't really work, so, yeah, so, let's take this thing off. By the way, I got some freight cars behind it.
I do apologize for the seven Pacific Caboose. I don't have enough Cabooses in my collection. So that concludes the video of the unboxing of this really awesome uh, Precision Craft Models uh, Reading T1 and it's going to be my second one I've ever owned except the first one I had from Brawler Limited I didn't own it very long I pretty much sent that one back the very next day I think so yeah this is definitely definitely a welcome addition to the collection and I am really really proud to have it i'm so glad i bought it and yeah I, I just love this thing and i loved how i got the preserved version too well not the preserved version even though the real thing is preserved but um was it an iron horse excursion something like that i don't know yeah iron, iron horse ramble not iron horse excursion iron horse ramble so at least there's that but yeah anyways Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, everybody. Well done for making it to the end. I, uh, it's actually the next morning. Uh, I, uh, <sighs> I was just uh, running my T1 because I felt like it, and I really wanted to because I love this thing. I've just now noticed a feature that is so cool, and I think... This is the second model I have that does it, not by BLI, but uh, I had I did have a Bachman K4, but that one's broken, but yeah, this feature is so cool, and I'm sure you guys know where this may be heading, and hopefully I'll get it, check that out, sorry for the uh, lens noise, but can't help that, I just love this feature. If you can see it in the light, if I get the camera at the right angle, you can see it has a firebox flicker. I have the engine muted so uh, you can hear me talk, but yeah, I just thought I'd point that out. That is just so freaking cool. I was not expecting to have that on a old BLI engine like this. <laughs> it's probably one of the best purchases I've ever made. I'm really happy I bought this thing. Yeah, that's my Redding T1. Love this thing to death. Really, really do. I do kind of wish that I can um, change the headlight to a, a bright white LED, but I think I'd rather deal with that than to mess with it. <clears throat> Simply because, uh, obviously, you don't know what I'm doing. <laughs>
So I guess it's best to leave it as a yellow LED rather than a bright, rather than a replacing it with a bright white LED. So, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Just wanted to point that out. Just enough to notice that. It's so cool. <laughs>